Um, this week, I'm basically going to do one of those, you know, little filler projects that you do when you're um, in the process of working on a couple of other things and you're having to wait uh, for things to dry or things to arrive before you can finish it. You know, the kind of projects that, uh, you know, trickle on over a few days. Um, so I was thinking about, you know, a little filler project that I could do, something else that had occurred to me that I can do while I'm waiting for those things. And uh, one of the things that I uh, have often thought about, particularly when I watch uh, Bolt Action Battle uh, reviews on, on YouTube, is, you know, the lovely uh, maps that people do, you know, the lovely battle maps where they've got, you know, actual rubble in the streets and things like that. Um, and they've obviously just tipped it on loose, you know, just to make it look, you know, more effective. And, uh, you know, I thought like when I'm playing, you know, a lot of the time I've just got the sterile buildings. Yeah, I've got the damage going on inside the buildings. But I can never really bring myself to tip a load of rubble on the actual mat and everything. So I thought, well, what can I do as an halfway house to that? So what I'm going to do, because I've got a sheet of... Uh, thin plastic and I thought what I'd do is um, build some little corner terrain pieces that I can put around the house and put my rubble on that um, so it's fixed so I don't have to tip loose rubble all over my mat and then clear it all up after the game I can just simply slot it around the house and at least it'll give that suggestion that the rubble has spilt out onto the road. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So I've got this uh, sheet. I'm not quite sure what the thickness is, but looking at it, it looks, I don't know, a mil, perhaps a 1.25 mil, maybe. And uh, the good thing about it is it's light and it's going to lay flat. And uh, I've got a bit of packing material that's, come this week so I'm going to utilize that straight away and break that up just to keep things a bit lighter so I thought I'd build them in a variety of styles you know because some are going to have uh, the rubble down the side some are going to be more rubble on a corner so I thought I could get a variety out of this piece and so I've took a few buildings out just to give me an idea of what I'm trying to achieve. So I thought with this one, I could use this as my start piece. But the idea is that they'll be universal, so they will fit round others. But I just thought if I did this, it will give me a starting place. So then what I've got to do is decide how I'm going to spill that out and how far. Now, given that the average street is, what, four inches, three inches, something like that, I don't want to spill out too much and I don't want it to be too uniform. So I'm just going to freehand Like that. Whether you can see that very well. Well, you'll see it better when I cut it out, I think. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out. And then I'll show you the next part. Right, so I've cut a few different types of cornering out now and that'll be enough for, for going on with I've got several small squares of plastic that I've took out to form the corners which I can keep for some freestanding terrain um, so they'll come in useful at some point what I have done is I've kept some of the straggly off cuts because we can use them to straight to strengthen these pieces underneath the foam. Um, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim a few of these up and use them as like un underneath armatures to hold it flat and firm so we can build up on top of it. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. All I need to do is just to make sure that they're not exposed and they don't show. So what I'll do is I'll cut a few of them out and uh, stick them on and then I'll bring you back. Now that the uh, reinforced pieces of card have, are in place, I've started breaking up small bits of this uh, polystyrene. And I'm gluing these in random areas over the top and onto the plastic. Bases. Now if, when you stick them on, think, oh no, there's a bit, a bit too much there. Just peel a bit off, and it'll add to, you know, giving it a bit more of a random shape. But keep the little bits because it's it's good to just put them in small areas of it. Like on that one, I'll put a little bit there. Because the more of these that you put on, the less of your material you'll actually have to use. And it's a good way of using up some of the scrap pieces as well that you get from, uh, you know, making something bigger. So I do tend to keep all these normally, but uh, I've just got these at hand, so I thought I might as well use them. You can see that there's there's no order to it. You just Try and keep it random. You're not going to see any of this anyway because you're going to be covering it. So, I'm sorry about the noise of the television in the background. Someone's watching, so I hope it's not distracting too much. <laughs> And another little bit just there. So that's that one. Right. What I'll do is I'll just finish up these last ones and then I'll bring you back for the next stage. Now that the foam's dry, what I'm doing is I'm just painting over a coat of Mod Podge and black, just as a base colour. And uh, I will sprinkle some of the debris onto this, but I can add more later when it dries out thoroughly. putting it on fairly thick and this will uh, not only can I use this to actually coat coat it with the uh, rubble but it will also give it a bit more strength as well Right, I won't leave you watching this, it's a bit boring and repetitive. I'll bring you back when I'm about to put some of the debris on it. 
So now what I'm actually doing is scattering the brick rubble that I've got onto these before that black dries out. And I've also put a little bit of runny glue on there as well to help pick up some of the dust. It. what I'll do is I'll let that dry and then I'll uh, go back over it and drop some uh, watered down glue over the top to seal it in and then add any little individual parts that I want to add to it so I'll bring you back when I get to that stage now that they've dried out a bit from the first one I'm just giving them another coat with this uh, dropper of some again watered down glue and I'm adding a layer of sand now just to blend all of the the bigger parts together and it'll also just help it have a bit more strength in the final fix I've raised it up on, on a grid so that any spare glue can just roll off of it. Obviously some of this will, will come off but that's not the point. The point is it'll get through into all the crevices between the bricks and things and help to fill it out. And just give another gradient to the... Uh, rubble Giving it a thorough coating. Spread this over it. Chuck it in at the sides. different sizes that you can add to it the more realistic it's going to end up looking I mean I have got two other grits here um, this one's a little bit uh, bigger just as light but it'll break up the colour give another layer to it I'll bring you back when I've got these two done as well. So as you can see, my little uh, corner pieces of rubble are all starting to dry out now. Things are feeling a lot more fixed. Um, I probably will give it another coat of glue. Um, and then a final uh, coat of, you know, something like varnish. Just, just to seal it even more. 
but uh, they're not looking too bad. I'll close in on this one a little bit. So you can see the details. I put a little like broken step ladder on this one, and some tyres, and there's the odd bottle in the mix as well, and then some uh, a little chair that I've kind of buried in the rubble. But uh, yeah, they're coming on okay. They're looking the part. They have got a little way still to dry out. I may even use a little bit of wash on some of these as well, just to add to the definition. But I didn't want to do that until they are thoroughly, thoroughly dried. So, that's where we're at at the moment. So I'll bring you back for the final stage on these, um, when I've sealed them again. And I may, like I say, I may add a little bit of wash as well, just to give it a bit more definition. And uh, then I'll, I'll finish it with some uh, photographs. So... I'll be back soon. So these have thoroughly dried now and uh, they're ready for use. So I'll show you, you know, how I intend to use them. So I'll just get them out on the bench. And we can try a few of them out. that to one side right so let's start with this building so you could have it spilling out like that the good thing about it is they'll all be interchangeable so you can find the right one for the building that you're actually trying to surround let's put that one on that one that one on that one I probably not pick the best uh, the most damaged buildings out but you can get the feel of what I'm how I'm using them just so they don't look like you know all the damage is just within the building And obviously a lot of the, I've got a lot of buildings that are damaged, so, you know, I can swap and change them around. So that's, that's the idea of them. They're just a bit of scattered terrain that helps to make the buildings just look that little bit less, you know, sterile. You know, they sat on the scenery with damage, but no trace of rubble on the roads. But I'm not one for having to, like, you know, pick up a load of loose bricks and sweep up every time I set a board out so this is just a little compromise really to make it look a bit more realistic when it's sat on the roads right what i'll do is i'll uh put a take a few photographs to show you them in use and uh we'll wrap this one up right so here they are finished now um i've actually added a bit of brick dust and terracotta terracotta dust just to the top surface um, just before it finished drying and I did give it another coat of glue just to be sure um, one thing I would say is you know if you're making some of these yourself 
I've just picked some buildings at random, so I've not necessarily picked buildings that match the rubble. Um, but I have got a lot of brick buildings, so that's why I've done more brick. But you could match them to your particular buildings. So if you've got stone buildings, you might want to use grey stone rubble, you know, and just match it to the buildings that you've got. Anyway, I hope that's been useful to you. If it has, please consider giving me a like. And uh, why not subscribe for when my next video drops? Thanks again for joining me. Bye.